The choice of, of places is, is quite interesting. France, Serbia, Hungary, these are places that have been a little bit more receptive perhaps to China in the past. Yeah, so France is a leading nation in the European Union and actually was said to have backed one of those key probes into Chinese EV makers last autumn, which then seemed to sort of trigger this sort of momentum of other probes into other areas of Chinese green tech. Um, but saying that, Macron, I think, from Xi's perspective, is someone that presents... A more independent and a slightly different voice from the rest of the European Union. He's a voice that I think Xi Jinping is hoping will allow him to put a lot more space between the EU and the US, because we have seen this increasingly sort of similar approach to curbing China's access to some of these tech, to raising a lot of these issues of overcapacity. Um, and also, there is this sort of personal nature of the relationship between Macron and Xi Jinping. Xi, uh, during Macron's visit, took him to Guangzhou to the post um, of the Guangdong governor's residence, which is the post formerly held by Xi Jinping's father. Macron is responding in kind here with this personal touch. There is a plan to take Xi Jinping and his delegation to the Pyrenees Mountains, a, a part of the, the Pyrenees Mountains where he spent a lot of time with his grandmother, his grandmother's house. So we can see this sort of mutual personal touch and charm offensive on both sides there. Uh, Rebecca, we see the kind of personal friendships uh, and these relationships uh, in these cl carefully picked destinations, right? But does this have the ability to change or, I guess, to turn the tide uh, for China's relationship with the region more broadly? Because we know that it's not just trade tensions, but security tensions, diplomatic tensions have really been rising. Yes, we have seen sort of this coming at a moment where, of course, France too, for example, has just set this goal with various domestic uh, industrial partners to uh, increase the sale of EVs fourfold by 2027. We've also seen this flurry of allegations over Chinese spies uh, over the EU by Germany and the UK uh, and even so outside the EU too. Um, but uh, I think France and both Hungary, from Beijing's point of view, present this opportunity to allow to pressure the EV, the EU to move away from some of these EV pr probes. Hungary, for example, is a really important strategic partner for China when it comes to the EU. They do have the potential to block, uh, obstruct, or even delay some of those probes. Uh, Hungary, too, is the last remaining uh, European uh, nation that's a member of the BRI, too. Um, and so China is able to, in some ways, showcase the benefits of the economic relationship if it continues and the benefits to Europe more widely if it continues to sort of maintain freer, uh, more frictionless trade ties. And uh, Xi Jinping's visit as well comes with, or well, coincides really with Putin's inauguration for a fifth term. How much is that going to also play into the conversations, do you think, the war in Ukraine? Yeah, I think certainly. I mean, it's certainly an issue that Macron will want to raise and it has been a big obstacle when it comes to China's relations with the EU has been a really large sticking point. This feeling that China uh, hasn't used its influence and Xi Jinping hasn't used his influence and his personal relationship with Putin to somehow change the course of the war. I think that's going to be really closely scrutinized. But if you look at that latter part of the trip, going to Serbia, for example, for the 25th anniversary of the Belgrade bombing, this is a foundational moment in China's nationalist narratives that really helped to seed a lot of the anti U.S. anti-NATO uh, mistrust in China. Um, so it's also a signal uh, to Russia that it remains firm in its support of Putin. It's very much a reaffirmation of that relationship. Ditto with Hungary, a nation that has been much more supportive of Russia, much more distrustful of what it sees as the U.S.-led order. So on the one hand, while of course there is this charm offensive, she going to, to France, appealing to this leading nation of the European Union. On the other hand, we also see this reaffirmation of these very close ties with Russia and these more sympathetic parts of Europe to Russia as well. So it is very much a balancing act that does, I think, clearly show China's perspective and China's point of view when it comes to these really key geopolitical issues.